Hi, welcome to episode 339 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand spun yarns and my knitting patterns, and that is at the corner of Knit and Tea on Etsy. And sometimes we have social media uh, stuff going on elsewhere. There was a group on Ravelry, and I also have a Team CKT group on Facebook for uh, Tour de Fleece, but those are presently not terribly active. So hi, how are you? It is Monday, August 2nd. I can hardly believe we're already in August, and it feels like the summer is winding down. People are starting to talk about going back to school. Um, and I am eagerly awaiting the return of sweater weather. Um, I am not really a warm weather person and it has been crazy hot here. Last week we had several 100 degree days plus some heat index and so it was really hot. It has cooled down just a little bit this week, although we'll be back in the 90s this weekend. So it's toasty. And August is when I turn my attention to, even though it's still hot outside, I start to turn my attention to sweater knitting. And not that I haven't been sweater knitting over the summer, I have two that I'll share with you today, um, but I start to think about what I might like to make for myself in the fall, and I start crafting sweaters for my niece and nephew, and socks, and wintry things. And um, I will herald the coming of the cooler weather um, very happily. <laughs> So I hope you are doing well. Last week was kind of an interesting week for me. My husband was gone for the entire week. He came home Saturday evening, so I was on my own. And I have to tell you, um, I kind of joke that I went positively feral. I returned to my 20 year old self because in my early 20s, I lived by myself in an apartment. And um, I had the TV on the Olympics most of the day so that I could watch at any time. Um, and it was mostly background noise, but I did take my laptop and work out on the couch some last week. And I spent almost um, all of my free time watching the Olympics and crafting. And I got a ton done, not all of which I'll be able to show you today, but I spent a lot of time crafting and it was just absolutely wonderful. Um, there is something lovely about having the house to yourself and not thinking about anyone else. Of course, by Thursday, I was um, full to the seams, bursting to chat. I had lots of good things happen at work last week and just in general a positive week and I was excited to share them with someone and of course the person I love to share them with was not here. <laughs> So he came home Saturday night, tired, but having had a great week, he did a uh, bike ride through Iowa. He camped a lot, he rode his bike a lot, he ate lots of pie and drank lots of beer with friends and he had a great time. And I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that he stays healthy. Of course, we in the US are having a surge of coronavirus again. Um, we are vaccinated and we're hoping to make it through without um, too much casualty. I have started uh, wearing my masks again and staying home. Um, that said, I will actually be going to Chicago this weekend. This was a trip that we had planned um, before things got bad and we've thought about changing our plans but decided to keep on. Um, my parents are actually driving out from California to Chicago, which is where my sister and her kids live, um, and I am going up to meet them. I haven't seen my family since September 2019, other than on, sorry, since November 2019, other than on Zoom. Um, and I am starting to think that we may not be able to get together for the holidays this year, um, given how things are going here. So um, even though it's a little risky, we are going to drive, we're gonna stay in a hotel, and we're pretty much just going to, we're gonna do a big grocery trip, and we're not gonna go out to restaurants, we're not gonna go out and do tourist things, we are just going to spend time with each other, um, and my sister and my niece and nephew. So um, next week the podcast might be a little bit late. I should have lots to show because we are driving. Um, so it's seven hours in the car each way, plus, you know, evenings in bed and, and whatnot if I want to knit. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have either finishes or new projects to show you this week, but I am so, so close. So I'm excited to show you what I've worked on and I should have more for next week. Um, and all things holding steady, I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to have our visit. I am actually, my husband and I are both gonna go get rapid tests on Thursday to make sure we don't have anything before we leave. Um, and then uh, when we get home, we'll just quarantine for two weeks. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping everybody stays healthy 
um, and we'll be masking and doing everything we can, but um, I'm still pretty excited because I haven't seen my family in forever. It's been almost two full years. So um, yeah, so that is what is going on here. So let's start today. I am thinking of the autumn days and I grabbed um, my Harvest and Sons Cranberry Autumn Harvest for today. This is a black tea with cranberry and I'm trying to think what else. It has cranberry and orange in it. It's a little bit of a holiday feel, a little bit of a fall feel, um, but I think actually I'm going to make this iced as well this week, although today it's hot um, and I am drinking it in my Hershey's mug. But this is just a nice kind of fruity black tea um, that I enjoy. And Harney and Sons teas are delicious. So, sorry, I'm just looking. I have a, um, a cardboard box here that I'm placing my mug on and hoping it holds steady. <laughs> so, let's get into what I have been working on. I am this close to finished on two big projects. So, the first is the V back tee, which I have been knitting as part of a knit along with Zen Yarn Garden. The pattern is by Jamie Hoffman, who is Nidosophy, and actually she has a really cool new sweater pattern out. Um, I love her designs because sometimes they are so creative and she just attacks design from a completely new perspective. Um, the construction of the sweater that I'm almost done with is um, kind of interesting, but the new one actually starts with a circle in the middle of the chest and the back. Um, I believe it's called Moon Rising or something, something about the moon. And it looks really interesting. It may go on my list to knit in the future. Anyway, I am knitting the V-back tee, which is a tee which has promised has um, one direction um, up front and then a V-back. And it is completely reversible um, and it is knit in an interesting construction because for a while you're basically knitting in a teardrop shape, which is kind of rounded at the front and pointed at the back. Um, and you pull off for your sleeves and then you work down on your bias, um, your, the, the point that the V creates and then you do some short row shaping and you get it through to the finish. Yes, I am finished with the body. So all I have left on this now is about an inch and some ribbing bind off on each of the sleeves. So I finished the body last night. I'm super, super pleased with how this has gone. I am working with Zen Yarn Garden's Lux Cakes, which is a um, blend of merino, cashmere, and silk. Um, they are supersized skeins. They're 150 grams, 750 yards of fingering weight yarn dyed in beautiful gradients. This one is rice tie. So now the only decision that I have to make is exactly what I'm going to use at my sleeves. I have a little bit left of the gradient, which is a little bit of purple and some green. So I could use that at the sleeves. Or I have another cake, which is um, raspberry and um, or razzleberry and it has some either purple or pink and so I could either I could use either of those colors here at the sleeves. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. I knew what I wanted to do last time um, when I knit this as a sample but I knit a totally different size and so the gradient worked out differently and I added more of the razzleberry to it earlier and um, so I just I have some decisions to make. So I have a couple ends to weave in, not too many, because um, this is all one cake. You do have to do some maneuvering around um, pulling off for the sleeves. So I do have a couple ends to weave in, but in general, not a lot. Um, and I just need to decide what it is I want to do for these sleeves. And I will finish these this evening, no problem. Um, because like I said, it's just about an inch of knitting and then um, another five to seven rows of ribbing and I'll be done. So um, I'm super, super excited for this. And then I will block it and I will maybe even wear it next podcast. I was really hoping to have this one done this time. Um, and I just didn't quite make it. I finished the hem last night at about 11.30 um, and I thought about staying up late to do these sleeves and decided eh, I'll just do them um, tomorrow. So that is on my task list for tonight to finish this one. So again, that's the V-Back Tea by Jamie Hoffman. Um, it, is a, it is currently a knit along for Zen Yarn Garden. You can still um, order the kit. You can order whatever gradient colors you would like for your kit. Um, this can also, this tea can also be done in scraps from your stash and you can fade it. The pattern is written to include some color fades. We just decided the gradient made it even easier. So that is that one. 
The second one that I am almost done on is also for Zen Yarn Garden. This is a sample and I even actually started on the hem last night and I have to, um, I got part way through and thought I don't know if I like it and I want to sleep on it and then decide whether I want to take it out or redo it tomorrow. So the sweater that I am knitting right now is called the Ladyfinger Sweater by Morgan Waltersdorf. It is a colorwork yoked sweater um, and it is knit using Zen Yarn Garden Superfine DK. It calls for DK weight um, in the size that I'm knitting, which is a number three, which translates to approximately a 40 inch bust. Um, it calls for five skeins of DK weight, um, approximately 220 yards a piece. Uh, I have the five skeins of Zen Yarn Garden Superfine DK, which is 250 yards a piece. Um, and I am just about done. So last week when I talked to you, I believe I had just pulled off for the sleeves or I had maybe done a little bit more. Um, I did steam block this. I believe I had done that last week to make sure that it looked okay. And I had gotten the top. It's still a little wrinkled and I'll need to do a better job. Um, but I, I kind of steam blocked the very top to make sure that things were going well. And at that point, all of this stuff was still kind of on the needles. I have finished the body and I am now down at the hem. Um, what I decided was that, um, so let me talk about this a little bit. The pattern is a little bit loosey-goosey in terms of what it suggests you do. It gives you the bust measurement, it gives you working through the um, yoke shaping at the top and sort of tells you where to pull off for the sleeves. After that, it kind of says knit the body as long as you want. <laughs> and it doesn't have much specification. It also does not have a ton of specification on the sleeves. Um, people have customized it and have made long sleeves or a longer body. In the photo, in the pattern, um, the way the model, who I believe is the designer, is wearing it is that she is wearing it short sleeved and um, somewhat cropped. Not super cropped, but a little bit. And so I went ahead and um, sort of made my version look like that. And so I knit um, three more pattern repeats after I divided for the sleeves and then I decided that this was um, starting to be long enough and that I did not want to do another full pattern repeat. Um, I had sort of had my heart set on um, the bottom is supposed to be two inches of ribbing and I had sort of had my heart set on the red at the bottom because I thought it would match the red at the top. Now the only problem is that I skipped the orange to get to the red and that's bothering me a little bit. And so I went through and looked at all the other projects to see what I could do. So the first thing I could do is I could pull back the red and I could just do the bind off in the orange ribbing. Um, the only thing is that would mean I have red ribbing at the top, I have blue ribbing at the sleeves, and I have orange ribbing at the bottom. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I feel like that's too mismatched. I do kind of like the idea of the red at the top and the bottom tying it together, even though I didn't get there at the sleeves. Um, so my other thought is, and I do not want to do another full pattern repeat down at the bottom. Um, so my other thought was that it calls for two inches of ribbing at the bottom. And I did see a few people <clears throat> who did their ribbing in two separate colors. So my thought was I could rip back to the yellow and I could knit an inch of ribbing in the orange and then an inch of ribbing in the red. And that would complete the color progression, which I think to me would be more pleasing. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. Again, um, I expect to finish this tonight. Now, not finished blocking and everything, but I expect that even if I pulled this back, I could do this tonight because I knit this whole um, blue repeat, blue yellow repeat last night. So I should be able to get through, you know, two inches of um, ribbing, which is probably only six, seven, eight rows per inch. So um, my plan is probably to unpick this and go back to the yellow tonight and finish off. Um, as far as my colors, the only color that I am really, really short on right now is the gray. I only have this much left. That makes sense to me because it was one of the colors that I used um, as the largest in the, um, in the uh, knitting. And it also has a slightly different texture than the others. Um, something in the dye gives it a slightly different texture. So it's just a little bit off. But I have gotten most of the way through most of my balls. I guess I have really small on the blue and then I have... Um, red and or orange and yellow are still pretty full and then my red is pretty small as well so i mean i used nice numbers of these um in discussing sizing i know that zen yarn garden is going to be offering kits um and one of the things that i've thought long and hard about is like how would you do this if you had a different size particularly one of the larger sizes and I think you have a few options um, when it comes to this top. 
One is that you could buy duplicates of the colors you already have and you could keep it to five colors. Um, but the other way to go is you could add another color um, or two and that way you wouldn't have so much left over because I would hate to have someone break into a skein just for one more pattern repeat um, and have a whole bunch of yarn left over. So I feel like maybe you could add um, another color. The only difference that would make is with five colors, it kind of changes the way the colors work together as you work through it um, because it's an uneven number. And if you had an even number, each of the pattern repeats would be exactly the same. I know that's kind of hard the way I'm explaining it, but I just wanted to give some context for if you wanted to knit this, you could. You could also certainly knit this with um, yarn from Stash. And I saw a few people who said they knit it with fingering weight and they either rejiggered the math or they held the fingering weight doubled. Um, so again, this is Lady Fingers by Morgan Waltersdorf and uh, this is a sample that I am finishing and so I have a new sample that I will be casting on for next week. So those are the two big knits in progress that you have seen already. Excuse me. The other thing that I picked up this week is another chicken for the City Girl Farm. And I just thought I would bring that to share with you. They're calling this one brownie and it is just gorgeous. It is mostly dark chocolate brown, but it's got some of this hazelnut color and a little bit of cream. And um, it's just beautiful. And I'm knitting it in a textured stitch. And this is going to be a chicken soon. So that is also what I'm working on this week. Um, I am working on a big sample for Knit Picks that I cannot show you, and that has taken a large chunk of my Olympic knitting time this week, um, so I have been working on that. Um, I am excited to say that by the time we speak next week, I will have at least two more cast-ons to show you. Um, the first is I'm going to cast on for Miles Sock Arms this weekend. I am winding yarn. And that is one of the things that I'm going to take with me in the car because it is perfect. It is roundy, roundy knitting. Um, and I don't know if I'll get to the fun part, which is the sock arm sleeves, but um, I will get to the body and hopefully knit a good chunk of the body on his sweater. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I volunteered to test knit for a uh, good friend of mine in my knitting group. And so I picked up some yarn for that. I showed that to you a few weeks ago. That is Juniper Moon Farm Bud. And it is cotton. It's a bulky weight cotton, 100% organic cotton. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I picked it up in kind of a magenta colorway that's called Primrose. And she is sending out the pattern this week. So I think I'm going to take that with me as well. I can't remember whether it is a top-down raglan or a bottom-up raglan. Um, but either way, it is... Um, I mean, it will be a lot of yarn because it's a bulky weight sweater. But it's a quick knit. It b takes between six and 700 yards. And it's just a deep v-neck, plain kind of textured sweater. Um, and so I feel like both of those will be excellent car knitting. I won't have to pay attention to... Um, lots of projects or charts or, or directions or stitch counts or whatever. A lot of it's just going to be very roundy roundy. So um, I do have another shawl that I will be casting on when I get home. Um, and that's going to be a really interesting one. It is um, one of, they're by Marinja Knits, who is, um, I think it's Mary Melicor. I have to, I have to look it up, um, but she does some amazing things with um, short row shaping. And so um, a, lot of, a lot of her patterns involve color changing yarns. This one actually does not. Um, but although I guess maybe some of the versions she knit had some color changing, I'm gonna be using three um, mostly semi-solid colorways from Zen Yarn Garden, you'll see when I cast it on. Um, there are three fingering weight skeins. It is kind of a royal blue, a bright, bright kind of um, orange, egg yolk orange. Um, and then a lime green. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but um, they are the colors similar to the sample and they look really amazing. Um, and that is gonna be a fun one because it's lots and lots of short row shaping to create really interesting patterns um, in the knitting. So I have wanted to knit one of her patterns for a while and I'm very excited about that. So like I said, by next week, I should have two finished sweaters and three new cast-ons to share with you. Um, so hopefully things will go well and I'll have lots to show you next week. I do have a couple finished spins and I cannot remember exactly where I was um, in the state of them last week, at, last week when I podcast. Um, the first, I think I showed you off the bobbins, but I can't remember if I did. The first is um, Nestle Road, which is a Hello Yarn colorway. I think I did show you this one off the bobbins. It now has been um, 
washed and measured and it's about 330 yards of kind of a sport to DK weight. Um, it's mauves and a little bit of lavenders and then some different shades of brown. It's a little hard to see on here but I will have pictures up on Instagram and this is going to go in my Etsy shop. It is Corydale. It is not super wash um, but I do find that Corydale is excellent for socks. It's a little bit crisp. It makes really nice boot socks um, but it is and it's not super super soft like Merino is but it's also not scratchy either. Um, I think Corydale is my favorite kind of in-between wool for socks that really wear well um, and you know they're not the softest in the world but as time goes on um, I'm less about how soft can my socks be and more about can I not have to darn them and patch holes in them all the time. So um, this is Nestle Road and um, that will be going up in my shop this week. The second spin that I finished, I know I did not have done when I spoke to you last time because I had half of it spun and half of it, half of it was spun on one bobbin and I had not finished the second half yet. And this is Ascend and it is Polworth from Sheep Spot. And it is in kind of gemstone colorways. It's got kind of a pink and a blue and a green and some gray. And this one, I, you know, on a whim, I think I showed you last week, it had some interesting dye patterns in the fiber. That is the dye pattern kind of repeated a couple times. And so what I did is I split the braid in half and then I applied each half separately straight through as it comes. Um, so that it had large chunks of color and then I tried to two ply so that it would be a gradient. Um, I was semi-successful. I had a little bit more in one bobbin than the other so it didn't quite work out at the very end. Um, however, I do have some really nice sections of both gradient yarn and then um, also sections where the yarn stuck together. And this is kind of a cross section that we'll show you. So it starts in, um, I don't even remember, I think it starts at the gray at the bottom and then it goes through kind of a little bit of a minty green, which you're not really seeing. I'm trying to show this and I don't know that this is gonna, okay, so there's a little bit of minty green under there, then there's some blue and it goes into the, the pink and then back out and the nice thing about the way this is done let me see if I can maybe a little bit like that sort of I don't think the monitor is showing it super clearly but the nice thing about that is that I get both sections where the colors line up and sections where they overlap and so it creates kind of an interesting fade throughout now if you knit this skein into something like a shawl it will basically stripe it'll kind of fade as a gradient through and it will it will go from gray to green to blue to pink and then back out again so um you know it's it's gonna knit up sort of in one direction um and there are gonna be kind of stripes and chunks of color throughout um but I think the fade is going to be fairly gradual because of the way um the two plies lined up and so I'm pretty pleased with that um this one is right around 300 yards I think I can't remember yeah it's like right around 300 I did both of them at this I measured both skeins at the same time and one was 333 and I think this one was right around 300 um, and so they are both, um, they're not hugely generous skeins. I wish I spun a little bit thinner so that I could get four or 450 yards out of um, a braid so that you could really do like a single skein shawl. Um, but I do think this would be nice as a shawl. It's pull worth. It's not super, super soft, but um, it's not scratchy either. It it is um, fairly decently soft. Um, this would make great socks as well, although it's not super wash. Um, and if you divided the skein roughly in half, they'd be sort of fraternal. They wouldn't be exact because I didn't, by the time I got to the end of the gradient, the colors didn't line up perfectly. Um, so, but I think this is kind of an interesting and fun skein. And if nobody snags it out of the shop, then I'll probably do something with it eventually. Um, but I will leave it there. I think it would be kind of a fun cowl. You could probably do, um, one of the uh you could probably do a fun cowl with about 300 yards and just get the whole gradient in the cowl and i think that would be really cool so that is also going up in the shop this week that is ascend um and i don't know that i'm gonna get to spin this week i know i said that for the last couple weeks and then i spun anyway um but i really 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 want need to get some projects done before i get out of town and get to a certain place in my projects so that when i come back i'm not off track so I really think that this week is going to be devoted to knitting, but I did pull one braid. I'm sorry, I should have gotten the plastic out before. Um, this is another braid from Kumasi. I spun one of her braids during the tour and I absolutely loved it. 
Um, and this one is combed top approximately four ounces and this is BFL and I think the colorway was like berry patch um, and it's just it's reds and pinks and purples and I couldn't resist I liked it I don't know precisely how I'm gonna spin this my guess is it will probably look a little bit semi-solid as a skein um, because the colors are really all in the same family it makes me think of blueberries and strawberries and blackberries and um, all the summer berries so that will go on my wheel although I don't know that I'll get to it until next week um, I have once again overcommitted myself I am really good at saying yes uh, I am less good at saying no and part of it is because I want to knit all the things and I want to participate in all the projects um, and so I have a lot of knitting that I need to get done in August um, and so my spinning may take a little bit of a hit as part of that and that's okay um, I just I'm really I'm getting excited for the fall I have a bunch of samples for the fall I have a lot of things I need to make for me and for the kids um, and so it's just kind of I'm you know I'm not that I ever necessarily, well, I shouldn't say that because earlier this year I did lose my knitting mojo. I don't normally lose my knitting mojo, but I do find that somewhere in August it comes back with a vengeance um, and I am ready to go, go, go. Um, and in part because I'm knitting for um, stores that are getting ready to go, go, go for fall with a vengeance, um, I have lots on the needles. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for spending a little time with me this week. If this was your first episode, I hope you enjoyed it. If you were a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate your support and chatter and, um, it's fun for me to make these videos knowing that there are at least a few people out there watching. Um, I wish you, as I always do, a wonderful crafty week ahead. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. Um, I hope you are not battling terrible weather or sickness or anything else. Um, you know, these days, sometimes the world just seems kind of like a mess. <laughs> um, some days it's just really nice to unplug and uh, craft for a while and take solace in color and beauty and creating things with our hands and know that we are a part of a process that is ages old. So um, I wish you a wonderful week ahead and until I see you again, and I may be a little bit late on the podcast next week, I hope to record an episode when we get home on Monday, but if it gets too late, I may have to postpone till Tuesday, um, but I will surely have some new things to show you. So until I see you again, I will say as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.